Ladies and gentlemen, Oscar season is coming up by the end of this week. The big contenders of Best Picture, the big contenders for Best Actress, the big contender for Best Actresses will finally be duking it out to see who wins Best Film and Best Pieces of Art of this year when it comes to the industry of filmmaking. But today I am reviewing a little special movie that I went to go see two weeks ago. But because of my burnout and just dealing with all the shit that January was... I had to take it back. Is anything new here? I, I am up. When's the last time I've been early to anything or on time? 1917, directed by Sam Mendes, was a little war film that I went to go check out two weeks ago, my buds and I. If I remember exactly, um, to be more specific, was actually a film that, if I believe, was actually released in early or late December, but I believe it was only out for some film festival, so that's where most people checked it out. I went to go see it either way two weeks ago, back in mid-January with my pals, and... Here's what I thought about the movie. Everyone's heard talks about this film. It's been one of the just the biggest, not controversies, just the biggest, most praise and biggest talks in the film industry right now. Especially for what's so mind blowing that I realize now that it's a January release, which makes it even more mind blowing. Which because I think it's known at this point, especially if you're as much of a film nerd as I am, I am and know anything about the industry. Usually the film industry or Hollywood just likes to dump out all the random shit that they have for for January. So it's very shocking that when the movie industry all of a sudden releases some pretty big shit during January. Bad Boys for Life came out, which I haven't checked out yet, which I will be checking out soon. And big films like 1917, which have literally become Oscar contenders. You don't expect stuff like that to happen. But it did, and honestly, thank God for it. It's, it's stuff like this that just keeps me going. It keeps me so happy and so excited and so optimistic. I am a big fan of war films. It's one of the most interesting kind of stories you could ever tell. There's so much you can tell from a war story. There's so much you can explore when it comes to it. Because such this grand, insane, just devastating conflict that it can affect so many people. That there's so many stories you can always tell about it. When I think of war films, I instantly think of stuff like Quentin Tarantino's Inglourious Bastards. One of my favorite films of all time, Steven Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan. Another favorite of mine, Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. All of these films explore incredibly different things about war, you know, one's a very comical, very fantasy kind of, you know, actions, kind of superhero, James Bond-like thing with Inglourious Bastards, very dark humor, psychological horror slash comedy with Full Metal Jacket, and then just incredible perfect masterpiece with absolutely not, not wrong with it, and everything me and explore about war with. Saving Private Ryan, I fucking love that movie. Literally, almost choked just explaining about it. Well, war is a grand conflict, as I said. There's so many stories you could tell, from tiny things like little fat boys or little families wanting to help out in their part of the war and how they deal with it, with maybe their children leaving to war and how they have to deal with that, or paramedics trying to help out the people on the battlefield, to bigger stories like soldiers in the great battles themselves and how they handle them, to grander conflicts like how leaders. I another a film came out, I believe, a year or two ago about Winston Churchill and how big. Like leaders have to handle these grand conflicts that will be coming soon, like Britain being bombed by the Nazis. There's so much you can explore and so much you can tell. But a war that doesn't get explored too much, strangely, is because it's literally the prequel to one of the biggest conflicts in human history ever, is World War One. World War One is a very kind of interesting war because it was kind of like the last time we had a very... I feel wrong using this word, but I guess classy war. It feels dirty to say, but I guess what I mean by that is because, you know, most wars that people envision from, like, the past is, you know, knights and people in shining armor, swords and crazy stupid weapons that aren't guns or bombs that can just flatten entire cities and murder thousands of people in seconds. This was, like, the time that all of that was kind of changing and finally you know going to that full push where people realize oh my god you know these guys have guns now maybe we shouldn't be using fucking pretty looking swords to go try to kill the enemy because they will slaughter us in seconds all of us in seconds oh yeah and it was the first time almost a global conflict happened so you know there was that it was a pretty crazy war so a lot of times when this kind of when these stories are exploring this kind of war it, it's very interesting. There's so much to explore, and despite that, not many are really ever told. Yes, there are some iconic ones, especially back in the day when, you know, it wasn't so long ago when World War One and Two happened. A lot of it more was explored. Some of those iconic ones that pop into my head are stories like Lawrence of Arabia. Talk about, so finally, I can talk about World War One in a movie. This film is an incredible masterpiece. I mean, I, I've gone on and on already about what I think about world, war films, and most of the time, they're done right. There's very few war films, mainly because it's such a touchy subject in general. War is very disgusting, war is very terrifying, despite all the heroes and heroic things you can talk about. It's just not a fun thing in general. The heroes don't come out of war, the heroes come out in spite of the war. It's just a terrible thing to really bring up. So much death, so much destruction. 
it's never a fun thing. So when you see filmmakers wanting to explore stuff like World War One, to see really one of the first times that, like I said, war really got more modernized, and we see the things we use nowadays, like tanks. We forget that tanks really became a thing in World War One, and modern machine guns and rifles. It's just absolutely mind blowing to see it, and to be done in such a unique way. If you guys remember, the promotion of 1917 was a lot on the film being shot like if it was one take. If anyone's seen the movie Birdman, you kind of get what I'm talking about. And holy shit. When you see it, I, like I said, I went to go see it with my friends in the theaters. Please, this is a movie that is deserving to go be seen in theaters. This is just a technical masterpiece. It is a cinem cinematic masterpiece. It's a visual feast for the eyes and an incredible psychological horror at the same time. It Everything about this film was done so well. And it, what's so fun about it is that it's done in such a unique way where it explores the horrors of the trenches of World War One and what boys uh, that were pretty much my age, which is so mind-blowing, which is what I love that explores with the characters. If you guys remember, once again, to go back to one of my old reviews, and it looks like I'm going back and forth, but it'll make sense. What made Dunkirk so interesting as a film itself is that it wasn't really a character film. I know we're so used to because almost every film does it because it's the easiest route to go for. Most films, their big stories revolve around characters, not events. If you're exploring a big event, you are going to be attached to a character who happens to go through that event and pretty much holds your hand throughout the way. A film like Dunkirk was a very special one where there isn't really a character you follow through a main character, which usually, you know, as I've even said a billion times, you know, it's always characters are the most important part of a movie. You instantly think, oh, that's bad and that's going to ruin the movie. But no, these films are done in such a unique way where the characters either represent a whole group of people or you follow a whole group of people throughout the whole movie. So you don't really need to follow a specific character and understand too much about them because that whole group already represents the whole film. For example, the British boys in Dunkirk in the whole film, since you follow multiple people at the same time, but since they all revolve around the same event of trying to get the hell out of Dunkirk, you don't care too much about who they are specifically and learn more about their personality, but that they all represent scared people that are trying to get out of this terrible event. That's kind of what 1917 is, but they do explore more about the background of these characters, but they're done in such a unique way where it's meant to represent all of us. Every single person and something we could relate to. It's a very almost relatable film when it comes to the characters because people forget World War One is practically fought by people my age, which is absolutely fucking terrifying to think about is why I think it should be a war that should be explored more. It's absolutely terrifying to think that people my age, 16 or 17, high school boys, were allowed to go fight in such a terrifying situation. I just can't picture someone that at my age is thinking about girls and school, homework, partying with the boys, or playing video games, or talking about movies, is having to worry about, oh my god, I might get shot today, and if I don't clean up my wound, I'm gonna get infected, or a rat's gonna eat it out alive. It's just, it sounds magic crazy what I just said, but that's the reality that those boys had to go through. And that's kind of what the characters in the film really represent throughout the whole way. You don't really get attached to too many of them, aside from the main two, which are explored very well, but it doesn't really matter because all of them are still meant to represent the youth and the youth of that generation and what they had to go through. They all have very relatable things that we could get. You know, them talking about their families back home and them talking about just regular kid shit and talking like kids, you know, cussing all the time, talking about the girls they want to bang. And it's really sad and it just gets you into the emotional part of this film because you realize, oh my god, these people are, especially to someone like me, my age and had the same dreams and aspirations and... Obviously, most of them are never going to come back from that, and it, it's terrifying. And 1917 explores that geniusly is what I love. People talk about just the technical marvels of this film, which, yes, should be talked about. The fact that it's all done in one take, and it, it almost puts you, and it's directed in a sense where you are with those guys. That's why I brought up the Dunkirk thing, where it's not really explored in the characters because you are kind of that character. You're almost in the film because all explored from almost a first person or third person, but very up close perspective where everything you see is happening almost around you and the sound, oh my god, the sound editing and sound mixing in this film, there were parts that when I was in the theater where you heard some things going on in the background of the film where I swear I thought it was happening inside, I thought some dude brought out a gun, like I, I was freaking out, my friends were laughing at me, they were too, I don't care, they make fun of me, they were reacting the exact same way because it was done that goddamn well, and that's what makes this film just such a masterpiece of work. 1917, in conclusion, such an incredible technical masterpiece while being an incredibly well done and well told story about the horrors of war, specifically World War One, that definitely must be watched if you haven't. These are the films 
that make me love filmmaking. Every single part of it is just done to its perfection and it inspires people like me that will soon be going into the film industry, hopefully, hopefully fingers crossed, to be able to tell unique and incredibly captivating stories like this. I'm gonna give 1917 a 9.5 out of 10. I know I feel like I've given those kind of scores a lot, but you know what? I've just been watching a lot of incredible movies and once you watch this film, you will understand why I love this movie so much. It is so goddamn good. And it's definitely, without a doubt, one of the best films I've ever seen for a January release. Please go watch this. If you want to watch Bad Boys for Life, that's fine. Still have a great time. I heard good stuff and I can't wait to watch it. But I know for a fact, it is not going to be close to the experience that I had watching 1917. You want to watch an amazing film? You want to feel happy after the shit show that was January? Go watch 1917. That's the best sell I could possibly get for this movie. Guys, that was my review for 1917. I'm so happy I'm back in the game to reviews again. I know it's been a while, and I know I'm sorry I'm so late with this review. I have been having a burnout, honestly, when it comes to movies. I'll confess, a lot of incredible stuff is happening to me right now, but as you all know, I'm a senior, and I'm in my second semester, which means I have like four to five months to go, so all the pressure's in right now. I am constantly working my ass off, getting things done, and doing all the volunteer work I can, so I look good for schools when I finally start, you know, start applying and worrying about adult life. You know, unfortunately, not everything's YouTube. I'm not trying to be the next Logan Paul or PewDiePie or anything, so I kind of got to get on the grind myself, so... I'm getting to that point soon. Four more months, and then it'll all be done. Four more months. Thank you all for watching. This was such a great time to do. New videos coming soon. Like I said, now that I have the time and it being Oscar season, I need to start talking about more films. Especially, I'm going to be next reviewing, I'm going to give you a heads up, The Irishman that I'm watching specifically tonight. Hopefully, hopefully I have time to review tomorrow. Let's just get fingers crossed. Just expect a lot of great stuff to happen. New videos also coming for gaming. I have a lot of stuff that I record with my friends. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day. See you guys.